So Faraday did an experiment and uh, in the experiment what was done was there were two concentric spheres okay and uh, the there was a dielectric medium in between and then the inner sphere was charged and when the outer sphere was removed and measured what Faraday observed was that you know the outer sphere was charged to the same extent as the inner sphere and this charge was always equal to the inner sphere even when the charge on the inner sphere was changed the outer sphere also the charge changed and further important he found that it was independent of the medium in between the two spheres so he uh, understood it or he presumed that there is some flux which he called as the displacement flux which is moving from the some sort of a displacement happening from the inner sphere to the outer sphere so uh, in SI units what this he, this he called as the electric flux and uh, in SI units this electric flux happens to be equal to the charge please I want to draw your attention to one thing psi psi is what is used for the electric flux and the electric flux is simply equal to the charge clear it is not the charge it is not a charge it is equal to the charge are you getting my point what is the difference so you see it, it does not behave like a charge it's a the electric flux from the electric flux we define an electric flux density right so you just see here i have an inner this is what faraday presumed okay i have an inner sphere i have an inner sphere and i have an outer sphere and it was presumed that you know i have some flux lines going out from the inner sphere to the outer sphere and uh, the total charge is equal to q and now if i consider a sphere around this right the charge the flux density would be q divided by 4 pi r squared so 4 pi r squared is the area of the surface area of the sphere now what would be the flux density on this sphere on this sphere it would be q by 4 pi a squared assuming the radius of the inner conductor is a and on the outer sphere it would be q by 4 pi b squared considering the outer radius to be equal to b okay so we have defined something called flux density now look at this does this equation look like something we know d is equal to q by 4 pi r squared i have another equation with where i have q by 4 pi r squared what is that that's the electric field intensity of a point charge except that i have an epsilon not there d is equal to q by 4 pi epsilon not r squared right so i have that additional epsilon not term in e so i can say i can say you know d is equal to epsilon not e clear so the flux density now we have come to a definition is given by q by 4 pi r squared a r right and equating getting it from e i get d is equal to epsilon not e so only thing is here i have treated q like a point charge i have treated q like a point charge but in uh, yesterday's discussion we saw that q could be a line charge or a surface charge or a volume charge and actually volume charge is the most general all the others can be considered as special cases of volume charge so we can write this expression e equal to q by 4 pi epsilon naught r squared i can write this as i can replace q with integral of rho v dv over a volume what is rho v rho v is the volume charge density so we saw this equation yesterday and similarly in from this i can say d is equal to integral of rho v dv 4 pi r squared a r over the entire volume okay so this was faraday's observation now let us see how whether i can find out d before i go to gauss's law just from the formula just from the formula right 
good find d about a uniform line charge of density 8 nano coulombs per meter lying on the z axis in free space right so it lies on the z axis now i know the formula for this what is the formula due to due to our line charge it is rho l divided by 2 pi epsilon naught rho here this is the charge density so the charge density is 8 nano coulombs per meter 2 pi and this is epsilon naught you can also use third, 10 to the power of minus 9 by 36 pi into rho right here rho is the radial distance so this gives me the radial distance at any sorry this gives me the field at any radial distance rho now specifically if i just take an example and i say rho is equal to 3 meters i get e is equal to 47.9 a rho volts per meter so at a distance of 3 meters from the line charge my value is 47.9 volts per meter and it is directed radially it is directed radially from the line charge to the point under consideration so now what is the flux density associated with this associated with the e field we find d i have to just divide this by epsilon naught so i get 1 by 1.27 into 10 to the power of minus 9 by rho so you see d is actually a very small number because i am dividing it by epsilon sorry i multiply e with epsilon naught d is equal to epsilon naught into e now what is the unit for d d is charge the you know the flux unit has the same dimension as charge and this is the flux density which is the flux per unit area and therefore the unit of d is coulombs per meter square okay coulombs per meter square so d if you look at d normally you know it is you will it will you will get around 10 to the power of minus 8 10 to the power of minus 9 and so on as i told you in the beginning of the class you just uh, you know be f familiar with that kind of numbers you you can expect so that you will know if you have gone wrong in solving any problem so now at rho is equal to 3 meters d is equal to 0.424 a rho nano coulomb per meter squared okay next so the total flux leaving a 5 meter length of the line charge what would it be the 5 meter length i know the flux density right and then if i want to know what is it which leaves the a 5 meter length i have to multiply it by 5 right so i just have to replace the charge here rho l this is all per unit length remember this rho is per unit length you have to multiply it by whatever is the length to get the charge the total charge now coming to uh, Gauss's law Gauss law is exactly same as Faraday's law so we cannot attribute the law the discovery of the law to Gauss it is to Faraday but Gauss put it in a nice mathematical formula okay so what Gauss said said was the Gauss, Gauss contribution was that he put Faraday's law up into a mathematical form which we can use extensively to solve many problems. Now what did Gauss say? The electric flux passing through any closed surface is equal to the charge enclosed by that surface. Repeat, the electric flux passing through any closed surface is equal to the charge enclosed by that surface again i have put you know in color note it is not charge it is equal to the charge it has the same dimensions as charge but it is not the charge so now what will be the total flux crossing the surface so just let let us assume i have a closed surface right i have some charge inside I have some charge inside so the total electric flux the the electric flux is is the is equal to the charge enclosed so now if I take the total flux crossing crossing the surface it would be 
it, it is written in a mathematical form like this. It is integral of d psi and it's written in this fashion. It is ds dot. So this d is your flux density and this is your surface area taken as a vector. And what does this circle indicate? This circle indicates that it's a closed surface. I had, I had visited this earlier also. So it is a closed surface integral with a dot product of the flux density and the area. Right? Why, why I need to take the, see if the lines are going out like this, then the surface area is also like this. Right? So it has to cross it. Now if I have fluxes, flux in some other direction, it may not cross it. Okay, so that's the whole idea. So this is what is very popularly called as Gauss's law. It's an integral form of Gauss law. Later on we'll see how we can make it into a, a differential form. Right. So now I want to draw your attention here. If the flux density is tangential to the surface, what happens? So I have... I have filled flux lines like this, flux lines like this, right? And the surface is like this, right? So the surface is parallel to it. Now, we had agreed and we had said, what is the direction of any surface when I make it into an area, any surface area, when I want to represent it as a vector, the direction is always normal to the surface. Right. So if I have the flux lines like this and surface also like this, the vector direction of the surface would be normal and what would be the dot product of the two? It would be zero. Clear? So if the flux lines are parallel to any surface, they are parallel to any, if the, if the flux density is parallel to any surface, then the total flux leaving that surface would be zero. Okay, so you should be very careful when you use this dot product. Fine. So, again I have just uh, summarized a couple of things here. So, the Gauss's law statement is the total flux leaving a closed surface is equal to the charge enclosed. Right? And what are the different types of charges we have? I can have a number of point charges. In which case Q is equal to sigma QN. So depending if I have N point charges or I can have a line charge. In which case Q will be integral the line charge density into DL. Or I can have a surface charge. In which case it is integral of surface charge density into surface area. Or it could be integral of volume over volume into volume charge density taken over the entire volume. So you can calculate Q using any of this. Now, what do I do with this Gauss's law? Right? It is relating flux density and we know that this flux density is directly related to the E field because D is equal to epsilon naught E. Right? So what am I trying to find here? So remember, we are not trying to find charge from the flux density. No we are doing the reverse. If I know the charge configuration, if I know the charge configuration using this relationship, Gauss law, can I evaluate D and hence from D to E? Okay. So actually the utility of Gauss's law is in derivation of electric fields with different charge configurations. Is it clear? We are not trying to evaluate Q here. We are trying to evaluate D. Now, uh, I don't know if this question has uh, struck any of you. I told you D is equal to epsilon naught E. Right? So the direction of D is same as the direction of E because epsilon naught is a scalar quantity. So I have two vectors. I have two vectors only simply related by a constant d is equal to epsilon naught e why should i have why should i define two vectors because whatever information i want about the vector is contained in e or d either one of them the other is only a scaled quantity right 
it's only a scale quantity so i don't get any additional information there so when i don't get any additional information why am i using two different vectors one i call it as e and another i call it as d okay this should have struck you in fact this is the first thing that struck me when i read hate because hate has introduced flux density very early on so you will find that two vectors are needed when we come to dielectric mediums which can get polarized okay so there the flux density and the e field are not directly related just by a constant but there is another vector which comes into picture which is the polarization vector and that is why two different vectors have been used and are needed to completely qualify and quantify the electric field so now let's see what all things i can uh, do with gauss's law so as i told you i want to apply gauss's law to evaluate d and e so first thing you should understand is gauss law is applicable only if you can find some symmetry in the e field okay e means when i mean e i mean d because e and d are in the same direction okay so how do i know there is a symmetry that you should know from your fundamental whatever we have discussed so far so if i have a point charge we know the field will radiate out because that is from the fundamental definition of the electric field intensity and if i have a line charge also i know it radiates out if i have a surface charge it has to always radiate out normally and so on so from this we should be able to gauge the symmetry so if i have some arbitrary uh, you know some arbitrary charge configuration where the field does not exhibit any symmetry i cannot use gauss's law for that am i making myself clear so be very clear whether you can use gauss law or you cannot use it so what the whole the crux of gauss law lies in this equation previous equation so what i have to do here is given a charge configuration q and given a car, q is given to you which could be a point charge or a mixture of any of them try to look at a surface so what do i have to do i have to find a surface which will enclose this charge right i have to find a surface which will enclose this charge then i can apply this formula and try to evaluate d but my problem is i have to take the dot product right so now i will try to make my life simple by choosing a surface okay such that ds dot you know that this dot product is either zero or it is equal to the just the multiplication of these two okay so what do i mean what is the dot product of any two vectors it is the magnitudes in the product of the magnitudes into cos of the angle between them so what i want to do is i want to see such that this angle is either zero or 90 degrees okay so if it is zero then then the dot product is only the product of the two magnitudes and if it is 90 degrees the dot product is zero it may sound a bit complicated but when we take up some examples you will find that it is not as complicated as it sounds okay fine so in applying gauss's law choose that surface you choose you know the op which encol en encloses the charge configuration that surface is called as a gaussian surface so choose a gaussian surface such that ds is everywhere either normal or tangential to the surface if ds is normal to the surface right so that this is my surface the flux density vector is normal right so then the then the area also will be normal so the dot product will simply be ds dot ds will simply be the product of the two magnitudes and if it is tangential just now i told you if the if it is if the surface is tangential to the flux then the direction of the surface is in the normal direction so the dot product would be zero so on the portion where ds so this is the first criteria you try try to choose a surface wherein you know the dot product either reduces to simply multiplication of the magnitude or it is zero and the second one is choose a surface so that 
on any portion you take on that is on the surface where d is not zero the magnitude of d is a constant clear the magnitude of d is a constant why am i trying to do all this so you see here you look at this integral now i, I am choosing a surface where this is simply the magnitude of 2 or it is 0 so i am not bothered about the points where it is 0 where it is simply multiplication and further where d is a constant what will happen i can take this d outside the integral right i can take d outside the integral and so what would i left with i'll simply be left with integral of ds which is nothing but the surface area of the gaussian surface clear so the evaluation of this integral becomes very simple if you choose such a gaussian surface now you just see it as i told you it's not as difficult as i uh, as we uh, as it looks first let me take the simple case of a point charge we already know in a point in fact we defined e field using a point charge from coulomb's law we defined it so we know it is equal to q by 4 pi epsilon naught r squared so let me see if i can apply gauss law here though it's very simple uh, we normally consider this for you to uh, understand the application of gauss law okay so let us say i have a point charge right and what is the uh, information you have from fundamentals of field theory the field everywhere radiates out we know this clear so it's all in the radial direction i know the direction now i have to choose a gaussian surface what is the constraint on the surface i have two constraints right the surface should be you know wherever the dot product should be either zero or it should be simply the multiplication and everywhere the magnitude of d should be uniform okay so now from coulomb's law we know that it's proportional to it's inversely proportional to r squared so from the point charge we know that all points which are at a radial distance r will have the same magnitude of the field right so what is the surface from a point where you know everywhere it is the same distance obviously it is a sphere so around this point charge around this point charge i consider the gaussian surface to be a sphere am i making my point clear around the around the point charge i take my gaussian surface to be a sphere right so i have chosen a sphere okay now where is my point charge my point charge is inside this sphere okay so what is the direction of the electric field intensity i know it is like this it is like this okay outward radial and what will be the direction at any point on the surface that will also be outward right so these two the flux the density vector the flux density vector and the vector of the surface area both are parallel so what will be their dot product it will be the magnitudes product of the magnitudes so now i say ds q q that is the charge enclosed i have written the gauss law the other way is equal to integral of ds dot ds right so now i have chosen a sphere here okay remember the surface area here is that of the gaussian surface gaussian surface now everywhere on that surface i have chosen i know ds is same so i take ds outside and i have integral of the sphere right and what is the integral of the sphere the radius is a constant so it is r squared sin theta d theta d phi with theta varying from 0 to pi and phi varying from 0 to 2 pi or simply you know from high school and primary school that the area of a sphere is simply 4 pi r squared we know that okay this is this is how it is actually derived but you know it is 4 pi r squared so q is equal to 4 pi r squared into ds so ds is equal to q by 4 pi r squared right this is correct i already know it i know it is in the radial direction and e is equal to q by 4 pi epsilon naught r squared this we have derived from coulomb's law i have derived this now from gauss's law okay um, though hate writes Gauss law like this, I think in problems it's better if you bring Q to the right hand side 
and uh, things will be clearer uh, if you do that now let's take a simple line charge okay we already know line charge is equal to lambda or rho l divided by 2 pi rho the radial distance now we'll see whether i can apply gauss's law to this right so now for simplicity again let me assume that you know the line charge is along the z axis it's along the z axis so now we know that you know everywhere the field is radial right so i will choose a cylinder as a gaussian surface i'll choose a cylinder as a gaussian surface and the axis of this cylinder is the z axis or that is the axis of the line charge itself the where the line charge exists okay and i will assume the cylinder has a radius rho at a radial distance rho now since if if as i as long as i keep the distance constant same okay we know that the field doesn't change the magnitude of the field doesn't change therefore this satisfies this surface satisfies the two conditions which i needed for gauss law application okay now what is the area so this cylinder has how many areas it has three surface areas the top surface right the bottom surface and this the cylindrical surface okay so now what are the surface area directions we will see so for the top surface the area direction is like this normal to the surface <coughs> and for the bottom surface it is out outward from the bottom and for the cylindrical surface it is radial right so if i consider any point okay so what will happen this will not since the field is radial since the field is radial any this the dot product over this surface will be zero because you know i need the dot product of this vector and the radial vector the two are perpendicular so the dot product will be zero similarly at the bottom surface also the dot product will be zero so i have the dot product existing only in this cylindrical surface clear so now let's see whether i can use it so q is as, as i told you hate uses like this but i prefer to use q on the right hand side so q is equal to integral of the cylinder ds dot ds and the cylinder has the sides that is a, a cylindrical surface and the top and the bottom and as i told you the top and the bottom integral will reduce to zero okay because the dot product is zero and along the cylindrical surface ds will be a constant so i take it out right and what is what is the area of the cylinder 2 pi rho l right 2 pi rho l rho is the radius of the cylinder so from this i can write ds is q divided by 2 pi rho l okay so this gives you the flux in a length l the flux density spread out over a length l so in terms of the charge density how can i write q q is what q is rho l into the length l what l am i talking of look here i have considered a line charge here i have considered a line charge here and this is my cylinder the cylinder is of length l the cylinder is of length l the area of the cylinder is 2 pi rho l now what is the charge enclosed here within the cylinder because gauss law is the total charge enclosed inside the surface so that is this line charge right this is not enclosed in the surface this line this part of the line charge is outside the surface this part of the line charge also is outside the surface so what is the total charge here it is simply the charge density into l that's it so q is rho l into l so substituting that l will get cancelled and i get d rho is rho l by 2 pi rho here or you can say lambda i told you you can use lambda also for the charge density so it is lambda by 2 pi rho so i have e is equal to lambda by 2 pi epsilon not rho which is what we derived earlier now you just see here it is a one step process in gauss law just straight away you can do it 
and if do you remember in the last class how much of circus we did to derive this uh, uh, you know field due to a line charge so much of geometry we used r is equal to h cot theta tan theta derived very simple okay so though we have done these two charges earlier i have i have done it so that you know to illustrate how easy gauss law is for uh, application okay uh, agreed you agree with me it is simple yes mm. now we'll do a very important application of gauss's law very commonly used this is to find the field in what we call as a coaxial cable so a coaxial cable is like this this is how it is i have an inner cylinder okay this is charged with sigma coulombs per meter square an inner cylinder and the radius of uh, this this inner cylinder and i have a concentric outer cylinder both are conducting both are conducting right so because of this charge obviously it is on this inner surface so the field will be radial are you understanding so i have cylinders i have cylinders two cylinders and one inside the other i have two cylinders okay and uh, the field is radial so we know the field is dependent on the distance so obviously the surface i would like to choose is a cylinder again which is concentric with a coaxial cable right so i choose the gaussian surface to be a concentric cylinder of radius rho okay so now i have three possibilities if the point is inside if the point is inside if you remember in the last two things i very smartly got formula right this formula had the magnitudes of the distance so you can use it for any point not only one point you can use it for any point that's what we are trying to do here also fine now if i have a point inside i can have three possibilities here to find the field i want to find the field everywhere every all places i want to find the field okay that's my idea so if i, I what are the three possibilities it the point lies inside the inner inner cylinder that is one uh, uh, possibility inner surface or inside the in between the two cylinders or outside or outside okay so the inner inner i have a cylindrical surface so this is it now if when i take rho less than a also so this is a gaussian surface if i take inside okay then what happens within the inner surface there is no charge enclosed because charge is there only on the surface the surface of the inner cylinder right so if i take a point inside a gaussian surface right which is a cylinder passing through the point then what happens my charge is outside this so it will not enclose any charge so ds will be equal to 0 clear ds will be equal. am i am i clear yes fine now let me take a point in between so here in between the two cylinders all right so i want a point here i want to find the field at a point there it is at some radial distance rho now what what do i do i choose a gaussian surface which is a cylinder passing through that point so i will take the length of the cylinder to be l length of the cylinder to be l right so same thing so you write this way you will not make mistakes so in integral of ds dot ds right ds is constant because it's at a radial distance all of all are the same so i take ds and what is the area of surface i want the surface area is that of a cylinder so it is 2 pi rho into l this is equal to charge enclosed okay now the charge is the charge on the inner cylinder in a length l inner cylinder in a length l look here what what am i doing i am choosing a concentric cylinder here of length l right and where is the charge the charge is on this inner sphere surface inner sphere surface and i want to know what is the charge enclosed over the inner cylinder over a length l right and what is it is just i know the surface charge density okay so what will be the area surface area of the inner inner cylinder it will be 2 pi a l what is a a is the radius of the inner cylinder 
clear you see i am using too many radiuses here this radius is the radius of the gaussian surface okay where is it it is in between the two cylinders and what is this radius this is the radius of the inner sphere okay i so this is the surface area of the inner sphere over uh, sorry inner cylinder over a length n clear the surface area of the inner cylinder over a length l what is the surface area of a cylinder it is 2 pi radius is a into l okay now this surface area carries a charge density uniform charge density of sigma coulomb per meter square therefore the total charge enclosed is 2 pi a l into sigma okay so i write that so ds so please remember this is the area of the gaussian surface and this is the area of the charge configuration that is the inner sphere so in your integral d dot ds that ds is the gaussian surface area whereas to evalu evaluate the charge you need the areas or length of the charge configurations so from this it gets cancelled and i get ds is equal to a sigma by rho so in vector form i can write ds is a a sigma sorry this rho is missed out it is a sigma by rho in the a rho direction okay this is in a more familiar form so and i can just simply replace sigma is lambda by 2 pi that is the total charge charge density would be 2 pi a the charge divided by the length l that is 2 pi a sigma i get so i can write d in the more familiar form i get lambda by 2 pi rho a rho what is this lambda by 2 pi rho what is this this is exactly the field due to a line charge okay so it is as if as if the inner sur surface the cylindrical surface is replaced with the line charge at the axis with a density equal to lambda and how is lambda li related to the surface density through this formula lambda is equal to 2 pi a into 1 into sigma okay don't get too boggled over all this all this is simply common sense okay you are given a simple formula so formula is very simple integral of d dot ds is equal to q right so you need to find first a gaussian surface and then you need to evaluate the area of the gaussian surface then you need to evaluate the total charge q right that is all that i have done here and now let's see i am left out with one more point what happens if rho is greater than b right so i had first one i had a point inside the inner cylinder then i had a point in between now i have a point outside the outer cylinder but then we saw what did faraday say when i have two conducting cylinders right the outer cylinder will be charged equally and opposite to the inner cylinder so for all the outside world the net charge enclosed would be zero right the net charge enclosed would be zero therefore outside also we do not have any field the f right so such an arrangement is called as a coaxial cable or a coaxial capacitor and it has no field outside the cable and no field inside the inner cylinder so it acts like a shield okay the same thing whatever i discussed now coaxial cable we'll just consider this problem and then wind up the class so i have i, I have a 50 centimeter length of coaxial cable and inner radius is 1 millimeter 1 mm and outer radius is 4 mm and the space in between is filled with air and the total charge on the inner conductor is 13 nano coulombs it's not sigma it is q itself directly what is the charge density on each conductor and what are the e and d fields fine now if i take a charge density on the inner cylinder i have the total it will be charged by the surface area i want the surface charge density so it is the, the total charge is 30 nano coulombs and what is the area of the inner cylinder 2 pi 
रेडियस रेडियस